Grant Harper from Livestream Australia. We're Australia's live video streaming professionals. We provide consultancy, on-site production, sales and hire of live streaming products. We only sell and recommend products that we know work and that we use on a daily basis. So if you've got any questions at all, contact us at livestreamaustralia.com.au. Today, we're going to look at the minimum steps you should take when your live stream studio television switcher first arrives. The first thing that we do is we install Windows Security Essentials. This ensures that your computer's safe while connected to the internet. We install all the Windows updates. We install Blackmagic driver updates. We install the graphic card updates from NVIDIA and then we install the Livestream Studio updates. We also install software that we feel is important to get the best out of your machine. That includes QuickTime, Flash, VLC, Chrome Web Browser and TeamViewer. If you install TeamViewer on your Livestream Studio Vision Mixer and you have difficulties, you can contact us at Livestream Australia and we can remote log in and help you out. So now we're going to go through the recommended processes to install the updates and software. First up, we're going to install Windows Security Essentials. So we open up Internet Explorer and we search for Windows Security Essentials. Now this is Microsoft's own security software and we think, think it's uh, as good as uh, any of the commercially available software. By the way, we're recording this screencast over the local area network using a second Livestream Studio machine, the Livestream Studio 500. We're using Remote Cam and it simply picks up uh, another Livestream Studio or any PC for that matter and brings it across as a full frame camera device. We just go through the process to install security software. It only takes a few moments. Once we install it, we also ask it to update all its information. Click finish and it runs. And now it's going through an update to check for its virus and spyware definitions. And then your computer's protected, so it's very, very important. While it's doing that, we can now close Windows and we'll go into Windows Update. And Windows Update will go through all this computer software and look for updates to the system. Now this does take some time, the first time that you run the uh, updates. So we'll let that run in the background as well. We've been using Microsoft Internet Explorer and I don't particularly like using Internet Explorer, so we're going to download Chrome. We're going to make Chrome our preferred browser. So while we're downloading Chrome, our Microsoft Security Essentials actually downloaded the updates. It says now that we're up to date and it's now actually doing its first initial quick scan. And the first initial quick scan is not actually that quick, but after the first initial quick scan, it gets quicker and quicker. Chrome has been installed. So we'll now launch Chrome. So now we've installed Chrome and uh, I also told Chrome to be our default browser. We're going to update the Blackmagic Design device drivers. So we simply type that in, Blackmagic, and we'll find Blackmagic Design Support, Capture and Playback, and we want Desktop Video 10.1. Now we don't need to register any information here, we just simply click on Download Only and it has started the download process. The download is about 120 megabytes, so it takes a few moments while it's doing that. 
we'll have a look at the other processes, which is the Windows update, and it reports that there's 105 important updates to total 387 megabytes. We won't install those yet, we'll wait until our Blackmagic design downloads completed, which it nearly is. And once it's downloaded, we simply go in and run the installation process. After you install the software updates from Blackmagic, the computer will ask you to do a restart, which we've just done. When it restarts, it will update the driver software to all the different connection types on the back of the computer. Uh, this takes a little bit of time. You'll also notice that uh, when you do the system software updates from Microsoft, you will have to restart the computer quite a few times. This does take a bit of time the first time, but as I mentioned before, it soon settles down and you don't need to do it very often at all. We're now going to install video helper programs such as QuickTime, Flash and VLC. We've downloaded the Flash and we're going to go through the installation process. We're going to now install VLC. An important piece of software that we recommend you install is TeamViewer. This allows us to log on to your computer remotely and assist you when you need help. Now that we've installed most of the updates and software, we now run Livestream Studio to check if there's any new updates for that software. Once you've installed the Livestream Studio version 2 update, you'll need to register your software. When you finish registering your software, there's three or four minor settings that you need to make and then you're right to go. 
We have successfully updated all the software on the computer, including security software, driver updates, helper programs, and the Livestream Studio version 2. Before we get started, there are a couple of important changes you need to make to the settings of Livestream Studio version 2. When we first start Livestream Studio, we need to change a few settings. The first one is the project format, and we need to change that to the Australian standard, which is 1080i50. Next, we go down to recording, and we make sure that our megabits per second is set to 50. If you need broadcast quality, you can go to 120 megabits per second, and if it's a non active scene, you can drop it down to 25 megabits per second. We choose 50. Media player, we need to change some settings. When you finish recording a show, you can output the video as an MPEG-4. You need to change that to 1920 by 1080. Ten megabits per second. Click save and you're now ready to produce your first show. 